Good morning. It's Friday, April 21st, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Crossing the Rubicon with Hope. And our scripture is 1 Peter, chapter 1. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. When Julius Caesar crossed the Rubicon River in 49 BC, he was returning from battlefield victories in Gaul, modern France, in response to the Roman Senate's summons and order to disband his army. By Roman law, it was a capital crime to lead any army into Rome. Caesar carefully considered the consequences and conferred with his officers. According to the Roman historian Suetonius, Caesar remarked, Even yet we may draw back, but once cross yon little bridge, and the whole issue is with the sword. Caesar is reported to have concluded the risk was worth taking and said, Let the die be cast. He led his men across the river. Julius Caesar led a thousand soldiers across the bridge to begin a five-year civil war, culminating in the crowning of Julius as Rome's dictator for life, albeit a life shortened by daggers. How you come to power is at least connected and often the basis upon how your power ends. Caesar was a warrior at heart and brought the sword to everything he did. His power was achieved by fear-producing threats, killing, and treachery. His eventual demise was the fruit of that sword. Fast forward 50 years, and the cradle in Bethlehem was the crossing of another vastly different and ultimately important Rubicon, the point of no return for heaven's Lamb. Crossing that river to Calvary's hill also declared war, on the gates of hell. This war would not be fought with swords or legions of flesh and blood, but rather the sword of the Spirit and allegiance to the blood of the Lamb. Moses asked a vital question of the children of God in the wilderness, who is on the Lord's side? The issue of faith has always been and still is decided by a Rubicon question. To be a believer, one who trusts fully in Jesus Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and second coming, is to cross faith's river with hope only in Him. And that kind of trust is a point of no return. It shuts the back door of choices and throws wide the door of moving forward, the bridge burning behind you. For those who choose to trust Christ loosely, keeping ties with the old life and options open, Scripture has a warning. John chapter 6 But some of you do not believe me, for Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe, and he knew who would betray him. Then he said, That is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, Are you also going to leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe, and we know you are the Holy One of God. For you today. The bottom line about being a disciple of Jesus is you either cross the Rubicon of faith with hope only in Christ, or you don't. There are not two horses to straddle. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.